guy. Hallelujah. There you go. Yeah. Come on, give God some praise. Tell him thank you for your life. Tell him thank you that you woke up today. Tell him thank you that you're saved. Your name's written in the last book of heaven. Come on, glory to God. Don't be concerned how you feel. He's God Almighty. Your feelings have nothing to do with it. He saved you. He gave you talent. He blessed you. Hallelujah. Look at the girls. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Good to be in the house of God. Amen. What a blessing it is. What an honor it is here to stand before God and present the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and have you guys here just believing who he is, trusting who he is. Amen. That he is the God who saved you, the God who delivered you, the God who has redeemed you, who snatched you out of the hand of the enemy and has brought you into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're no longer, your eyes are no longer blind. You can see now. Amen. You're no longer deaf. You can, you can hear now. Amen. You're no longer lame. You can walk now. I'm talking spiritually. Amen. I'm not talking physically. I'm talking spiritually. Things are happening in your lives, and you got to be uh, happy for that and blessed of that for what the Lord has done. Amen. I'm going to uh, continue to talk about a little bit on the faithfulness of God and going to uh, the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does for us and how he leads us and guides us. And <clears throat> it's through the faithfulness of God that God left him here for us. He left the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, to instruct us, amen, in the way that we should live, in the way that we should go, in Jesus' name. So uh, it's just about listening. It's, it's easy, huh? You know, to listen but to obey is a different thing. Amen. We can hear the word. Do we do the word? That's the thing. Amen. To live the word out loud before the people and be a witness. Uh, yesterday I went to a ball game with a couple of the men. <clears throat> they were all sharing. They're all excited. Amen. They were all sharing in the vehicles and things like that. And uh, one of them said that he held his, his faith. He wanted to quit. He wanted to give up. At one time in his walk, that happens to every one of us. You know what I mean? At one time or another, you want to like, ah, I'm done. I just let me live my life. This is your life. Christ is your life. Amen. You wouldn't have a life without Jesus Christ. Where would you all be without Jesus? You know, some of us know where we would be. We'd be dead or in, in prison or something, you know. Or some of us be homeless out there. Lost, you know, right? Divorced, separated, right? Knees be hurting and everything, you know. Get my right knees hurting from climbing those steps. <laughs> I told those guys, this is enough exercise for the next month. Mark it all down right there. Just check off every square. Boy, they couldn't believe how sweaty I was when I got to the te to the top. I was like, <laughs> that was some work, Fred. <laughs> Getting to the top of that stadium, boy. But God is good. Uh, like I said, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad to be here. We're going to open up in prayer. And uh, got a couple of, we got a surprise here today. We want to surprise someone here today. Amen. Uh, we always want to be a blessing to each other. Amen. You know, when you walk in, smile. You know, walk in with a smile. Walk in with a greet, a wave. Even if you don't even know their names, just Hey, how you doing, brother, you know? He's your brother and your sister in Christ. So uh, let us pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives and our salvation, Lord. We bless you and honor you as we surrender our thoughts, Father, our emotions, our sin, Lord. As we surrender all that right now, casting it all to the side, for we know that you care for us and you love, love us, Lord. So we ask that you bless this time. You bless our minds, our ears, our eyes, that we would hear what the Spirit of God is saying. That we would grasp the truth and walk in it, Father. Walk in your wisdom. Walk in your righteousness. Walk in who you are living inside of us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord. 
We thank you for conviction, Lord, for we, we've learned that conviction is good, Lord. If we're being convicted, that's a good thing because we know that you live within us. Lord, so we're going to honor you with our lives. We're going to bless you with our lives today. As we worship, as we praise, we're going to clap. We're going to dance before you. We're going to move our feet. We're going to jump up and down, Lord. We're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're so blessed. We're so blessed to be called Christians. So blessed to have a father like you that loves us unconditionally. That loves us even in our faults. And even in our shortcomings, you still love us, Lord. So we love you back, Father. We start today, Father, with new beginnings because your mercies are new every single day. They're brand new. So we start afresh today. And we're going to lift our hands. We're going to shout. Father, we're going to do whatever you ask us to do, Lord. So, Father, we ask that you bless those that are on their way right now. That no harm will befall them, Lord. No accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires. Not even a ticket speeding trying to get here, Lord God. We ask that you protect them. You protect our children and our grandchildren. Wherever they may be, Father, we thank you that angels are kept about them, Lord God. Watching over them. Removing every wicked and every unreasonable person from their lives, Lord God. And you're sending ministers angels in disguise into their lives, Lord, to bless them and to honor them. Even when they don't honor themselves, Lord God, you honor them, Lord. So we love you and we bless you for today, Lord, and for the rest of our lives, we're going to bless you, Lord. And we're going to say thank you every single day in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Let us bless his holy name We magnify your name We magnify your name We magnify your name Jesus We magnify your name speaking about the lame man in Acts chapter 3 it says as they approached the temple a man lame from birth was being carried in each day he was put beside the temple gate the one called the beautiful gate so he could beg from the people going into the temple when he saw Peter and John about to enter he asked them for some money Peter and John they didn't give him money. What they gave him was Jesus. They gave him a touch of healing. So yeah. don't sit beside the temple. Yes. Come into the temple. Yes. Amen. 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 Hail, 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 hail to the line of Judah, hail, hail to the line of Judah. 
Judah. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the Great I Am. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the Lion of Judah. Hail, hail to the line of Judah. Hail, hail to the great I am. You are the Lord. You are the Lord of the nations. You are the God of creation. You are the rock of salvation. You are the Lord, you are the Lion of Judah, you are the Savior, Messiah, forever Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord, you will reign now and forever in your royal majesty, all the glory and the power be to you. We will worship, we will worship. your throne. Confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord of the nation. You are the God of creation. You are the rock of salvation. You are the Lord. You are the Lion of Judah, you are the Savior, Messiah, forever Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord, you will reign, you will reign now and forever in your royal majesty, all the glory and the power be to you, we will worship you forever, shout it. One day every knee will bow before your throne. Best Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lion of Judah, Lion of Judah, roar, Lion of Judah, roar, Lion of Judah, roar, let your enemies be scattered, Lion of Judah, roar, Lion of Judah, roar, Lion of Judah, roar, let your enemies be scattered. Oh, oh, oh. 
glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. All blessing and honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. All blessing and honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. Glory and power be unto the Lamb. Blessing and honor. Glory and power be unto the Lamb. Sits on the holy, 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 Sing in honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb who sits on the throne. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto the Lamb. on the throne of oh, line of Judah roar line of Judah roar line of Judah roar and let your enemies be scattered line of Judah roar line of Judah roar line of Judah roar and let your enemies be scattered Come on, church, we gotta press deeper. We gotta press deeper. Line of Judah roar. Line of Judah roar. Line of Judah roar. Let your enemies be scattered. Amazing. I look to you. I look to you. Come to me. 
me alone. You're my help. You're my help in times of trouble. You're my strength. You're my strength.
Family, this is your time to glorify the God who created all things, who's renewed you, restored your life, put it back in order. This is such a precious and wonderful time. Just close your eyes and think of your heavenly Father. Don't think of anything else. Don't let the things around you distract you. The enemy will try to rob you of worshiping God right now because he knows that if you worship him, that you will be in better relationship with him and that you will be a weapon against him, an army that is rising up in this place. Don't be deceived. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore.
great are you, Lord. Oh, great. entire body that sings before the Lord. And we say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Because this is your house, Lord, and we came to worship you and say, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. You deserve all the praise, Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord, just the voice you say. you worship God. I, I worship my Father. Let it come out of your mouth. Let it come from your heart to your mouth to God. You got to say thank you. I can't say thank you for you. I can't, I can't say I love you. You got to say I love you. Yo no puedo decir gracias para uno. Uno debe decir gracias por uno mismo. You gotta have a shout. You gotta have a gratefulness in your heart. No one can make you do that. You gotta learn how to praise God and bless God all of you on your own. nothing to be grateful for. You are nuts. You're grateful. You got to be grateful. If you can't say thank you, Father, you're full of pride. You can't tell you're grateful. Si uno no puede estar agradecido para Dios, no sé qué trae ese. We should be all grateful and thankful. Especially you Christians, all you Christians, you should be grateful. You're saved. Your, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God knows your name. Dios conoce tu nombre. Dale gracias a Dios. Que estás conocido por Dios. has done some great things in your lives you don't even know about. God saved your children from that child molester. 
God changed your children from that kidnapper. They had their eyes on your kids, but God said, no, 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 you turn the other way. God watched over them. Because you can't be everywhere, but God can. And he watches over our children. And he blesses your life. Some of you guys say, I have a terrible life. Thank God you got a life. Some people don't have a life. <clears throat> They've lost their life. They're blessed. God is restoring. These tears aren't of sadness. They're of gladness. God is doing something new in people's lives. And you got to recognize that. God is a God of refreshing. God is a God of newness. He's doing something new every single day. You got to learn how to perceive it. You got to learn how to see it. You're well. You're healthy. If you got tears, praise God. Praise God. Si uno tiene lágrimas, gloria a Dios. Then you still have some sentiments. You still got feelings. Because there's some people that are hard and ugly and have no hearts. Thank God we can cry. We're human, amen. <clears throat> we can praise God. Pongo a alabar a Dios. Le vamos a dar gracias que pongo a alabar a Dios. Porque hay unos que no pueden alabar a Dios. If they wanted to say the name of Jesus, they can't even say the name of Jesus. They're lost in wickedness and evil. They're lost in darkness and Satan has a hold of them and they can't say the name of Jesus. You can say the name of Jesus. You can say that name. I ran into many people out there in the streets and that's how I test the spirits. It's easy to ask them, is Jesus Lord? They'll say, yes, Jesus is Lord because they know that. Demons know that Jesus is Lord. But then I'll ask them, I'll go further, and I'll say, is Jesus your Lord? They can't say it. They can't say Jesus is my Lord. You, everyone in this room should be able to say, Jesus is my Lord. You should be able to say that. Every one of us who says we're Christians. How many of you want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise it up high. You want to go to heaven? You should be able to say Jesus is Lord. Every one of you who raised your hands. You guys who didn't raise your hands, I want to get you saved. I want you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is, there is no other way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. And you guys who, uh, who didn't raise your hand, put your hands down. For you who didn't put raise your hands to say, Jesus is Lord, I'm a Christian. I want you to say this after me right now. It just, it's a template. Because it's going to have to come from your heart, not from my heart. But I want to lead you in this anyway because I don't want you to say, that pastor didn't preach no gospel. That pastor didn't lead me to Jesus Christ. So say this, say, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me for my sins, for I have sinned, and I've sinned in front of you, and only in front of you have I done this sin. I ask that Jesus Christ come into my life and make me new. Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe he was buried for three days. And I believe you resurrected him from the dead. And now he sits at the right hand of your throne. And I say, Jesus is my Lord, my Savior, my God. Welcome to the family of Christ.
Family of God. If you, if you meant that, you're, you're, you're in God's family. Now what you have to do is just learn the word. It's a process of learning the word. Learning the playbook. You're on a football team, baseball team. You got to learn the playbook, right? You had to learn the playbook. Same thing. We have a playbook. Ahora que somos cristianos, necesitamos aprender la palabra de Dios. A leerla, a estudiarla. Y así cambia el mente, el mente cambia la vida y uno cambia toda la vida de uno y su, y de su familia por el poder de la palabra de Dios. By the power of God, you can change your life. I know many men here that when they walked in, they walked, some of them walked straight from prison into this ministry and their whole lives are changed. Many, many men walked in here. They were drunks, they were drug addicts. They were wife beaters. And not just physically, but emotionally with their words. They put their, their women down where they can get up. God delivered them. And they learned how to speak to their women and not speak down to her. And the same thing with ladies too. Learn how to speak to their men. Learn how to honor their men. And that's what it's about. If we get along, we can get along with me and you. We can get along, hermana. But can you get along with that man? You know what I'm saying? That's the man hard to get along with, the one you sleep with, the one that you lay next to, the one that you wake up with, right? You can get along with me real good. Oh, pastor's cool. He's great, you know. But is your man great? Is he cool? You know, is she great? Is she cool, you know? Get along with the sister here at the church, open up her door and everything, and your wife is standing there like, really? You're going to go right there, huh, brother, right in front of me. That we learn, and we learn the word. God changes our lives. But we must let them. Can't fight. No se puede pelear contra Dios. No se puede pelear contra Dios. That's foolishness. Just surrender. Lord, have your way. Have your say. Have your will done in my life, Lord. I'm tired of fighting. Aren't you tired of fighting with your spouse? Fighting with your children? Aren't you tired yet? You gotta get you gotta get to that point in your life when uno ya está cansado de llegar con su, su mujer. Ya estoy cansado. Enfadado de todo esto. Quiero a Dios. I hope I'm speaking correct Spanish. Amen. Am I doing all right, Bert? Doing all right, he says. All right. Porque hablo español mochito. Se nota eso, ¿verdad? Con mi acento todo anglo y todo eso. Pero, pero sí se entiende, ¿verdad? Amen. I speak Spanish. I love the Lord. Yo amo a Dios. Amo a Jesucristo. Love Jesus. Got to love Jesus. And Jesus will change your life. Quit trying to be so hard, some of you guys. Porque se quieren poner duros delante de Dios. Dios hace squinkle. Boom. He'll just thump you, man. We try to get all tough in front of God. You ain't tough. God made you. Like I said, a lot of guys came for the joint here. They came in here. I said, quit walking the yard. You're not in prison no more. Quit doing that. I said, you're free now in Jesus' name. Amen. Live your life. Live your life for Christ. That's what we're to do. We're to be lovers. That's what the Bible says. We're to love one another. Forgive one another. Anyone that doesn't have sin, raise your hand. Any one of you that don't have sin, raise your hand. Every one of us have sin. We blow it one way or another. Our doubt, our disbelief, our foolish thoughts, even a foolish thought is a sin unto the Lord. That's a thought that replays in your mind over and over. It's not a thought that just goes through your mind. It's a thought that you've hung on to. It's like a strong tie. 
It's not a strong tie, but it's like a strong tie, and it'll hold on to you if you let it. You gotta cast that thought down. Every thought, every high imagination that comes against the knowledge of God, cast it down and bring it into the captivity of Christ Jesus, Jesus, into the obedience of Christ. I want to encourage you guys today. You have the power. You have the power. You don't need pastor to pray for you. You don't need other people. Then we go back to our religion. We go in a little booth and let the man pray for us. And then we're forgiven. No, we're forgiven because of Christ. Amen. That's why we're forgiven. And you can talk to God anytime you want. Children, I want you to know you can talk to Jesus anytime you want. When you're in the backyard washing dishes, doing laundry, I just want to talk to you, Jesus. You're washing your car, your bicycle, whatever you watch. You can talk to Jesus. He's your friend. He's your confidant. He's your go-to. I love that, the go-to. He's the go-to guy. When everyone else is not around and you're by yourself. Uno puede hablar con Cristo cuando está solo. Puede estar lavando trastes, puede estar limpiando la yarda, puede estar trabajando un carro, pero puedes hablar con Cristo. Es tu amigo. Él es tu amigo. Él nunca te falla. I wouldn't wear that shirt again. Not in the house of God. I would never wear that shirt. Another shirt. Does someone have a t-shirt, extra t-shirt in, in their car. Want to take that shirt off, Bill? Want to go outside, take it off. I'm not putting them on blast. This is the house of God. We have to. You, you guys have to know. You guys have to guard the anointing. You have to guard the Spirit of God. My son was wearing that stuff too, Hermana, so don't think that I'm picking on your kid. I told my son, you got to get rid of a lot of stuff on your neck. And I went in his room and took all that stuff off his neck. I said, get that out of my house. That does not belong in my house. So don't ever walk me in that stuff. He had an upside down angel. And I told him what it meant. So you never want to wear that. Skulls around your neck. That's death. That represents death. You never want to wear skulls. It's calling death to yourself. You dishonor God wearing a holy thing that he wears upside uh, to wear that upside down. My son came home with a, a shirt with a demon on it too. And I said, take that off and throw it away. He goes, my girl just bought this shirt. Dad cost like $60. I said, I'll give you the 60 bucks. Throw that shirt away. I said, do not bring that in my house. Especially in the house of God. When we come to the house of God, we have to come clean. I'm not saying perfect because no one of us are perfect. I raised both my hands. I'm not a perfect man. But we must come with a clean heart. And we must come expecting things from God. Some of you come not expecting, so you receive nothing. So church is boring. But if we were to ask God what you need, what you desire, in his will and according to his word, he'll give it to you. Because that's his word for you. That's his will. He wants to heal us. He wants to bless us. He wants to restore us. He sent his only begotten. Only begotten means the only son from heaven that came down to earth. We're going from earth to heaven. Jesus came down from heaven to earth. The only begotten son of God. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish. Would not die. 
but have everlasting life. Have everlasting life. get upset at people get upset at the sin we're to we're to hate sin Christians are to hate sin I don't know where you I don't know where you guys got your teaching or where you guys came from but if that pastor wasn't teaching you to hate sin then he wasn't teaching you right we're not to go along with the world we're not to be part of the world we're not to be that. We're Christians. We're separated. We're set apart. And it takes work. It takes work. It takes a consistency. A determination. This this whole weekend from Thursday to Sunday, if you guys, you men that didn't come, you guys missed out. The... <clears throat> Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. Hallelujah. Close those doors because uh, I see a lot of money going out that door, man. We already went through that one time. I don't want to do that again. When your bill hits over three thousand dollars, we got to be good stewards of what God has given us, and then we have to take care of the house of God and take care of ourselves. We are the house of God. Mm-hmm. This building, just a building, that's all it is. We are the temple of the living God. We got to take care of ourselves, and I'm learning that the hard way. If I could tell you guys my story, the fight I'm in right now, I'm fighting for my life. You guys don't even know that. Amen. I'm believing that too. Doctors told me I can fall out any time. This would be the perfect place to fall out at. In the pulpit. I said no jumping up and down, no running around. I'm jumping up and down, I'm running around. I'm believing God, I'm trusting God. No tengo otro, I don't have another. That's what I got saved for, man, to believe in God. Amen. This ain't my home. This is not my home. My home is heaven. This is all temporary. We're going to go through it. No one's going to live forever. If you get to live the 120 years God promised you, ooh, wait, that's beautiful. But you're going to have to eat, right? Can't be no McDonald's and stuff like that. Can't be no carnitas. We got to eat healthy. We got to eat well. Got to drink water and not soda pops or juices or anything like that. Purawa. That's rough. That's rough. It's rough for Angel, too, man. <laughs> the Lord God is good. Just so much, so much, so much. Such a little time now you realize, you know, but so much, so much to to say and so much to do in Jesus' name. Uh, but the good work he begun in every one of us, God is going to finish. God is going to finish. Amen. So uh, let's, let's bless God. Let's honor God. Let's continue to worship. This is part of worship. We're going to do our tithe and our offering. Amen. And we give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart, not because you pastor's telling you to give. Uno da porque da de su corazón para el trabajo de Dios, para la obra de Dios. No es para uno. Yo no gano buen dinero aquí. Estos trajes ya tienen 20 años. These, these suits I wear, they're 20 years old. They're old suits. I just had them fixed up to modern time. I had the cuff taken off, had the pleats taken off. Because, you know, my wardrobe assistant, she'll tell me, like, can't wear those pants no more, Dad. Those are way out of style, you know. So take it to the cleaners and have them get fixed up. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Raise it up high, and these married, handsome men will get you an envelope. 
If you didn't bring a check, you didn't bring a, what else did you didn't bring? Check, huh? Check, oh, cash, check. I was going to say cash and check at the same time. <laughs> if you didn't bring cash or a check, don't be concerned. We have a phone number right here. It's 714-477-7736. One more time. 714-477-7736. Amen? So that will prompt you. You mark that number on your phone. Si uno no trajo dinero o no trajo un cheque, puede marcar este número ahí en su teléfono. Lo manda a uno. No sé cómo se dice. How do you say prompt? Prompt. To prompt. Oprime. Okay, there you go. Para, puede oprimir y te manda otra, otra, otra cosa del teléfono. No sé cómo se dice. Pero uh, ahí puede dar uno por teléfono. You can give through the phone. Give unto the Lord. You give unto the house that feeds you, the house that blesses you. And if you're a visitor, you can still give. You can, oh, that ain't my house. When you go visit somebody, take some oranges, take some apples, take a case of water when you go to visit your compadre, your comadre, or your cousin or somebody, you know. Don't just go empty-handed. Take a olla de frijoles, you know, whatever. You know, take something. And when you come to the house of God, we should always have something to give to him. Amen. And if you don't have something, just by faith. Thank you, Father. Next time I get something, I'll give it to you. Amen. I, I, I tell you, it works. When you give unto God, he gives to you. I, I sowed some seed into a minister's ministry. And I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to do it, Lord. I heard him say it, you know. And I sold the number he asked me to sow into that ministry. The next day, one of the ministers walked up to me and gave me $1,500 for the church. He goes, I want to give you $1,500 for your church, Pastor Angel. I said, wow. So when you obey God, God will, I'll give you. I gave $300. He gave me $1,500. Just that's the way my father's always worked with me. Always, always. I've given a, a one time, I, I, the God had given me a name of a lady. He says, I want you to give her $100, Angel. I want you to give her $100. I'm not bragging or boasting. If I am, I lose this credit anyway with God anyway. Doesn't matter that you guys can learn a lesson on giving. And uh, God gave me a name of a lady. And at the end of the church, I said, okay, Lord, I will give it to her. And uh I said, where's your sister at? Where's sister so-and-so? They said, oh, she's in the, in the parking lot. She's leaving. And I said, move out the way. I had to gate through people because they want to talk to you. Even tell them, I'm in a hurry right now. Well, I've got to talk to you real quick. Like, no, I'm in a hurry. Don't you understand? You know? <laughs> and you got to go. So I get out to the parking lot, and she's at the, at the uh, driveway. And, you know, I yell at her. I say, hermana, hermana. She speaks Spanish. I go, hermana, hermana, espérame, espérame. And I go over there, and I just give her a Pentecostal handshake means you put it in your hand with no one knowing and you just give it to her like that. She opened up and she began to cry like a baby. She says, I put my last money in the offering, believing God was going to meet my needs. She goes, I live all the way in Moreno Valley and I don't have enough gas. My car's on empty. She goes, but I wanted to come to church. And she says, this will fill my tank up. So... You never know why you're giving somebody something. You just be obedient to what God says. Even if it's a homeless person. Some of you guys want to tell these homeless people, don't buy drugs or cigarettes. You can't tell them nothing. You give them the money because God told you to give them the money. Give them the money and whatever they do with it, they do with it. That's between them and God. But you just listen to God. If truly God told you to give them something. Two, three dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars. I don't know if you guys ever gave a homeless person 20, 40, 50 bucks. You got to learn how to bless people. You look at their clothes and you judge them. Uh, they're not worth 20 bucks. So you give them five bucks, two bucks. And you say you never judge. <laughs> we judge. Just give them whatever God tells you to give them. 
And today, would, if you're not tithing, the tithe belongs to the Lord. If you're not tithing, just giving, give out of a grateful heart. It's a free will offering then. Whatever God tells you in your heart to give, write that. Don't cheat God. Don't say, okay, he told me $50. I'm going to write $20. You get nothing because you didn't obey. It's just obedience. He wants your obedience. He doesn't need your money. He owns it all anyway. Amen. He owns it all. So I just want you guys to be a blessing in Jesus' name. you father we just thank you for the worship lord we thank you for being our god lord we thank you for saving us lord we appreciate you sacrificing yourself on the cross for us lord we thank you for giving your will over to the father we thank you so much jesus christ lord we just thank you for this offering lord we thank you for all the sacrifices even that people are making lord jesus and we pray that everyone be blessed in this congregation lord in Jesus' name, and even those that did not give, Lord, but wish to give, Lord, we pray that you bless them as well, Father.
We thank you, Lord, and we just pray the blood of Jesus Christ upon the finances of this church, Lord, that there not be any worry, Father, that there not be any doubt, Lord, that the full trust is in you, Lord, and in your kingdom, and in your promises, and even the ones that we don't even know about, Lord, that are coming, and the blessings that are coming in Jesus' name. And that even goes for us individually, uh, our finances even at home. But we have to honor the Lord. We have to walk in obedience. So let us give ourselves to you, Lord Jesus, in every way that you want. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father. We praise you and we honor you. And we pray for multiplication here, Lord. Even supernatural, godly supernatural multiplication. It will even multiply without us even seeing it. Even before we count it, even after we count it, it will be multiplied supernaturally. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sam. And then, uh, release our children. Oh, no, no, we're not come back. That's right. Amen. No, uh, I got two things to do. You're doing one? Okay. Come on, where's the mic? Let me have that mic. Sander again for Pastor Eric, please. Go ahead and have a seat. Have a seat real quick, like. Yeah, you know. Let's go down here. Praise God. Amen. Well, you know what? There were two great uh, meetings we had this weekend on Friday and Saturday. And uh, for the rise men of God, we're going to be going up to Sanger in two weeks, and hopefully some of you men will join us and head up there. But it was an awesome time Saturday, as uh, Brother Thomas was sharing the how it was a time of intimacy of God, of the men just on their face as worshiping and opening up their heart to God on on Friday night. Some of the sisters, how many sisters came Friday night? I. I know there was a few that came Friday night. It was an awesome service, amen? But, but I want to give credit to some of the men like Ryan back there and Thomas. They were here at the beginning. They opened up. They helped out. Brother Diego, where is he? He's over there. The worship team was here Thursday night until 12 o'clock preparing for all of you that, well, he, they were preparing to 12 o'clock because they didn't want to cheat anyone that came. And so I just, I wanted to give them credit because they were a big help. Thomas and Ryan, I mean, I, they just helped me out a lot. And then, of course, our uh, our pastor, Angel, was here and uh, he, he, he was dancing. He was dancing. I don't think they had it on camera, but... <laughs> But trust me. But anyway, I have this, uh, what we do in the Rise Men of God, and I usually do it during the conference, but uh, God was just moving different ways this weekend. So I wanted to bring up, um, well, let me just say this. Rise Men of God, God spoke to me a, year, a couple of years ago and said, you have these awards for sports figures. You know, man of the year and all this other stuff. Why don't we do it in the kingdom of God for men of the year that for their faithfulness? Amen? <laughs> so I, I gave uh, Pastor Angel a list of five names. Uh, I was number five. <laughs> but he only came back with four. <laughs> I don't know why. But we gave this to man of the year. So I want to call up. Jesus Sandoval. Come on up. He's always in the background up there. 
The only time they get noticed is when they do something wrong or this sounds not right. <laughs> then everyone looks back, who's that? But it says here, Certificate of Recognition, this award belongs to Jesus, hey, Jesse or Jesus Alejandro? Alejandro Sandoval, 2022 Man of the Year, Turning Point Fellowship. <laughs> He has, a, he has achieved the high standards of being a man of God, a husband, and a father. And uh, I was able to get my name on it somewhere. You know. So as a founder, I signed off on this and wanted to congratulate you. Sometimes people don't realize the faithfulness. You're faithful even in times of trials and tribulations. You're still faithful. You still come and do what God's called you to do. You, you still being a dad. You're still being a loving husband. Maybe you're not perfect, but you've been a loving husband. And that talks about the characteristics of a man of God. And we need more men like you. And, and other men, I, I, I don't want to mention your name except me. But others I had nominated, and you all could have been you know, the man of God, because you are truly men of the year there. So, Pastor Angel, will you come up? And Thomas, you can come up and... Oh, I didn't want to let go. Uh, it's a gift card to uh, Black Bear Diner. There you go. <laughs> I've always asked, you know, kind of like to invite me. I'm available, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Let's 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 pray for him, Pastor Andrew. You want? Father, I bless you and I thank you for this man. Yeah. This man that has blessed you and blessed us, Lord, here at Turning Point Fellowship. A man who doesn't give up or doesn't give in. His faith keeps going and he's going to win, Lord God. I thank you for your blessings that are upon his life. The peace, the joy, the strength, the courage, Father, to say yes. To say yes, Father, to continue to fight the good fight of faith. I pray for his health, for a sound mind, Lord God. I pray that he, was, that he would continue to be sensitive to your spirit, believing you and trusting you. In all his ways, Father, in all his says, Lord, watch over him. Watch over his family, Lord. Let him enjoy this award, Lord God, as we celebrate him, Lord, for the man of the year of Arise Men uh, ministry, Lord God. We bless you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, praise God. Ryan and, and Thomas, come up here. Thomas. <laughs> stand right before me. Better yet, you stand this way. I'll prophesy this. It's what the Lord gave me. And the Spirit of God says, I've called you. I've called you and I have anointed you to be a Paul and Silas, to go into the highways and byways, to set the captives free. For don't even look at yourself as your capabilities, because I've anointed you, I've appointed you to do these things in the last days. For the word of God says in this last days that many are going to grow cold, many are going to be hurting, many are going to give up, but God is sending you out. To, make, to deliver the people in witchcraft, says the Lord. I've anointed your hands for healing. I've anointed your voice to speak the word of God. I've given you the spirit of discernment to see what's what. God's going to open your eyes. And even as you're walking down the street, even as you're ordering food, you're going to see in the spiritual realm the, the people that need a word 
that need a word of deliverance. And God's going to confirm it. He said in his word that he will confirm those with signs following. And God says, don't worry about the signs because I shall do what I'm going to do. I will not be later. I will not be before my time, says God. But know this. I've anointed you. I've appointed you. And now the glory of God is going to come upon you for a fresh anointing for even as David had would come upon you. For you have shown your faithfulness. You have shown your determination to go through. And the Lord says, withstanding the obstacles that have been before you, have been before you, before this day, the Lord says, I've broken the obstacles now. It's our freedom. There's a liberty to run, not walk, but to run and watch how God will move up your, on his behalf for in working through you and for you, says the Spirit of God. So know this. It's this time. You're in the season. You're at the right time. You're at the right place. And watch as I open doors. No man can close, says the Spirit of God. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. We, I want to do something here. Uh, we have a young man in the midst of us. That's come on up here, Fernando, please, Fernando, Fernandez. Uh, come on, let's give him a round of applause. This young man is going to be leaving to the army to serve this country. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Congratulations, baby. Brooks. Amen. Joining the army when you're taking off, you know. Monday. Oh, this tomorrow. Oh wow. Okay, he's taking off tomorrow. What a blessing. How old are you? You know? 21 years old. He's gonna go and uh give his life. Because if they call him out to a foreign country, he's gonna go and defend his country. The rights that we take advantage of sometimes. You know, things that we say we think we can do and do whatever we want to do. This young man's about to put his life out there. It's a beautiful thing to serve your country, to honor your country and your countrymen. He's honoring every one of you that you could keep your freedom, that we could worship a God. Amen. And keeping that trouble off of our land and just keeping it where it belongs because we're, we're a country of freedom here. In Jesus' name, and uh, I don't know why he decided to do that, but it's a beautiful honor, man. It's great, man. So we're gonna we're gonna pray for him. We're gonna lift up his name before the Lord and uh, ask the Lord to protect him and watch him, watch him and guide his steps. Amen. As he does, he's you just gave yourself to the Lord here recently, huh? Yeah, I was having a, a talk with his uncle. And his uncle said that he came and asked if he could live with him. He said, yeah. And then he said he didn't see him for a couple of months. And all of a sudden, he's there at the house. He goes, like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then, but he says that, uh, he goes, I, I didn't push Jesus on him. I just kept living my life. Me and my kids kept living our lives as Christians. He goes, and he, he noticed it. And he asked if he could come to church. And he started coming to church. And he gave himself to the Lord. And that's how we all should be living. But, and people, people watch our lives, and they want Jesus because they see your life. That's a beautiful thing, that they see the holiness in you, the righteousness in you of Christ, the joy, the strength, the change of life, that they want that. That's a beautiful thing, and that's what he desired, and that's what you got, baby boy, Jesus. Amen. So, Father, I thank you, and I bless you for this young man. I thank you for his life and his salvation. I thank you that he can, if I can use this word, proudly say that he is your son, that he is a Christian, Lord God. That he would honor you, Father, with all his might, with all his strength and all his mind. That he'll live with you, Father. He'll speak for you. He'll hear from you as he speaks to others, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth for divine protection over him, Father. 
his comings and his goings, Lord. That you protect him from the top of his head, the crown of his head, to the very soles of his feet. Lord, and I pray that you would always be in his heart, reminding him with convictions to serve you, to bless you, to live for you, Lord, as a young Timothy, Lord God, as a man of God to minister the word to the lost and to the hurting out there. I thank you, Father, for the call that is on your life, for what God has called you to do in your life. I thank you for the blessings and the mantle that's on your life right now. The call of God to preach the gospel. <laughs> it's going to blow your mind. What God's going to do in your life. And I pray that you would keep yourself healthy and well. Separated from the evil one and the evil people that are out there. The wicked and the unreasonable people that are out there that you would say no to them and say yes to Christ. For he saved you. He died for you. No one else died for you but Jesus Christ. So I thank you and I bless you for Fernando Hernandez, Lord, that his name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Watch him. Take care of him, my Father. Bring him home safely. And let him learn and let him learn well. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Appreciate it. You want to say something to him? Thank you. I appreciate it. You <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys, you guys can give him a Pentecostal handshake at the end of the church, you know. At the end of the service, you guys shake his hand, give him, drop something in his hand, man. Really, it's sowing seed into your children. You know, uh, go ahead and have a seat because we're already out of time. And I'm going to just minister for 10 minutes. But right here, I'm just going to minister. Uh, if you children, uh, you young men, young ladies, they're, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old, ready to graduate, ready to go somewhere. If you're not going to go to college, you don't know what you're going to do. You're going to be twits. mom and sit pops and she's a sit around you know I would recommend go to the military Air Force Navy Coast Guard Ar uh, Army Marines I, w I, I would recommend that you know three four years of, of your life you leave when you're 18 come back when you're 22 years old I think you would uh, get your head screwed on correctly and uh, see a little bit of see see a little bit about real life amen you, you, you'll learn, you know, uh, some things out there, and uh, you'll learn some discipline. You'll learn how to make up your bed. <laughs> That's one thing you will learn. <laughs> you know, uh, they'll teach you how to be clean and how to be neat and how to have mannerisms and yes, sir, yes, ma'am, you know. They'll show you respect and they'll show you loyalty. I, I believe you already have that all in you. When I was just near you, I could sense all that, that you're a respectful young man. You're an honorable young man. And that's just going to grow as you grow to be a man, you know. I think it's a, it's a good thing that people do that, that young people would do that. You know, I know it's getting dangerous in these last days, but I, I believe God will protect you and watch over you. And you get to come home. You know, some of you have already had military children, things like that. So, uh. I would just recommend that as your pastor, you know, if, uh, if you don't have know where you're going, you know, you get out of high school and you're like, ah, I'm not, I don't want college ain't for me, school's not for me, military. Ladies, you can go to Air Force too, you can go to Navy, you can, the Air Force and Navy will take you all around the world, you know, so I believe the Army will too and the Navy, I mean the uh, Marines, they'll take you a couple of places, you know. It's a good thing to learn, I, I would say. It's good to serve your country, too. It's an honorable thing. Can I get an amen? amen. I'm just going to open up the Bible here because uh, I don't want to. My father taught me years and years ago when I first became a Christian. He says, the spirit of God will move and the spirit of God will have his way as you let him have his way. You'll have it in song. You'll have it in prophecy. You'll have it in the gifts flowing in the spirit inside the church. Angel. 
He says, one thing I tell you as a pastor, because he was a pastor for many, many years. He's 90 years old. They retired him. He didn't want to retire. They retired him because they had younger men coming on the pulpit. You know, I know some of you young bucks ready to kick me out already, you know. <laughs> like when pastor goes down, I'm up. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. I, I like that. I like that, that you guys uh, would want, desire, you know, the call of a bishop, you know, <laughs> in Jesus' name. But uh, uh, my father said, <laughs> she, did you get it? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my father said, never leave them without the word of God. Because the word of God is the one that works. Testimonies are great. Celebrating people are great, he told me. He says, but the word of God is the one that changes our lives. And that's why I try to encourage you guys to read your word because that's what's going to change your life. Church is not going to change your life. You know, it's good to come to church. It's good to fellowship. That's healthy. We should do that. We should do that. This, you guys had an opportunity Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to be at church four days. And uh, most of you didn't come. A little disappointed. I'm not upset. Just I used to get upset when I was a younger pastor. I would be ringing your ears right now. I would be on you guys right now. Just disappointed. Disappointed more than anything. Because uh, I'm here. When these doors open, I'm here. I don't care what's going on, man. My, kid, my grandson has a football game. I'm here. I'd rather be over there, but... I put the work of the Lord first. I put the Lord first. Uh, I know that's, you know, oh, well, you're a pastor. You have to. That's all of us as Christians. All of us, you know, when the door is open, we should not forsake the gathering of the brotherhood. We should be at church. I don't know where you guys want to be at. A drunk wants to be at a bar. A party bunny, she wants to be at parties. That's where she wants to be at, you know. Nightclubbers, they want to be at nightclubs. You know, uh, mechanics, they want to be in that garage, twisting, you know, wrenches and all that stuff. That's what they're called. We're, we're Christians. We're the sons and the daughters of God. I think we, if you, I know you love the Lord. I know you do. I, I have to believe that in my heart. I have to believe that you love the Lord. But I think that we need more desire as a church, the whole body of, of Christ, all across the world. But I can only talk to the people that are under here at Turning Point Fellowship. But I think we need to show up. If we're having church on Friday, I think you need to show up. Oh, we were there Thursday, Pastor. Hey, when I partied, I partied Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If it was my party on a on a Friday night, I parted the whole thing, and people come in. What are you guys celebrating? Angel's birthday? I thought it was Friday. We're still celebrating it. <laughs> and we would just go on and on. You just party. You party four or five days. Wouldn't even know what day it was. What day is it? And we would party. Come on, give me an amen. You guys know what I'm talking about, you know. Amen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He remembers those days. That's my primo. He goes, I remember those days. Yeah, he does. But as Christians, it's like, I already went to church on Thursday. I'm going to go back on Sunday. Wow. Church again. Church, church, church. Yes, church, church, church. You're going to spend the rest of your life with Jesus Christ. What are you going to tell him? Oh, I don't want to be here forever. <laughs> Can I just come visit sometimes? Maybe a week or so and then go, no way. My dentist, you know what he tells me? I don't want to go to heaven. I go, why? I don't want to be a little fat angel sitting on a cloud with a harp. He sees those little pictures, and he thinks that's heaven. Now, that's not heaven. That's a portrait of a man's imagination. That ain't even the way heaven is. I said, there's probably some chunky angels. But, <laughs> but where would we want to be? Where would you want to be? As Christians, if not in the house of God. I love waking up knowing I'm going to church. 
Because I used to be out there. 34 years of my life I gave to the devil. And I ran hard with the devil. Hard, very hard. If I live or died, I said, this, this is the way it is. This is the life I've chose, the vida loca. And if I'm going to live out here in the vida loca, this is the way it's going to go. And I've lost primos, I lost brothers, I lost family, I lost friends out there in the vida loca. And I say, when I do something, I do it all the way. That's my personality. That's my character that God has given me. And I come for Christ all the way. I'm not, I'm not playing games for Jesus Christ. I live for Christ. I love Christ. I'm going to die for Christ. I'm going to die for Christ. But right now, I'm going to live for Christ. Right now, I'm going to live for Christ. And there's some things that I have to do sometimes, as you saw earlier, that are hard. Don't think I take joy and stuff like that. For me to correct the church, for me to correct you guys and to get you guys on the right path, I don't like doing that. Who likes to correct people around here? Don't, don't raise your hand back there. <laughs> I, I don't. That's just like the Lord. He, he gives us all the ways out all the time. Until the end, then he has to correct you. Then he has to rebuke you. Then he has to break your heart because you're not listening. Like a good shepherd and real shepherd. When they have sheep and one sheep is a hard head, he's a terco, cabezón. He wants to do what he wants to do and go where he wants to go. You know what they do? They go get that sheep and they break their leg. And they put that sheep around their neck. And they carry that sheep and they're talking to that sheep. I told you not to do that. I didn't want to do this to you. But you don't listen. Stay with the sheep. Stay with the herd. Because wolves, bears, they're going to get you out there. And the same thing with us as Christians. You guys want to wander off and do your own thing? There's a wolf waiting for you. There's a bear waiting to eat you and devour you. Oh, he may look fine. 6'2", 185, 195 pounds, and drive a car, wear a nice watch and all that stuff. But he is a wolf. I had one in this church, and I had to ask him to leave. Because some of you ladies were all Google eyes over that brother. He had long blonde hair, green eyes, yoked up and everything. Knew the Bible. He could quote you scripture left and right. That brother could pray in tongues. And the brother's all. He's single, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> and ladies were asking me about him. You know who I'm talking about? They know who. They remember the brother. He's still good looking. <laughs> Got about four babies in four different churches. <laughs> and he was bringing them to the church. And I said, don't bring a girl here no more. I said, I'm not going to allow you to bring another girl into the church. Why, Pastor? It is my life. It is. Outside of those doors, it's your life. When you're inside these doors, it's my life. It's God's life. I said, so you're not going to teach other people to live that way and think they're saved and they're going to heaven. I'm a shepherd, man. I'm a shepherd in my heart, my life. I know that. God has told me that. I'm going to care for the people. I'm going to take care of the people. I'm going to step up. Hugo has been with me where things are happening. Hugo, that one time the guy was looking in the cars. I was I was going across the street, and he goes, where are you going, Pastor? I said, that guy, he's looking in the car. Says, I'm going to go in and talk to him. <laughs> Get over here. We got him. We got him. I'm going to take care of you guys if I can within my power to, to take care of you guys. So I had to ask that young man to leave. And he was becoming a good friend of mine. And I said, brother, you're a wolf. And he says, oh, like that, Pastor, just like that, huh? Big old Essay, like this. I'm like, God, oh, man, it's a big boy. And that boy hits me, it's going to hurt. <laughs> I said, but you got to go, mijo. I said, we can't come to this church no more until you repent and you give your life to Christ. I'll let you come back in. I said, because right now you're not, you're not living a Christian life. You're playing. You're playing. And he had, he has about three, four kids, all from different women, and they're all, Church girls. They say they was church girls. Carry their Bible and stuff, but 
I tell you, this guy was a good-looking cat, and he knew how to talk. And uh, he left, and I haven't seen him, but one of my friends ran into him. And he said, he told him, he says, tell Pastor Old Angel I love him. He was the first one to ever tell me stuff about my lifestyle. No other pastor ever confronted me like that. And I'm not saying I'm a tough, bad guy because I was kind of a, afraid. I was already older in age. He's young. You know, like, man, this guy's going to throw five punches to my one punch. <laughs> They're young, man. You know, you can't keep up with them no more like he did, you know, right? When he was 25, 30 years old, we go down with the best of them, right, Tony? You know, but now, you know, you're late 50s, early 60s, a little slower than what we think up here. A lot slower. <laughs> Days back then. I'm, he thinks he's moving fast. <laughs> but there's things that we have to do as, as leaders, Mija. I have to do to protect the flock. To protect the flock. Estoy cuidando, no sé cómo se dice flock. ¿Cómo se dice a flock, Mija? Las ovejas. Soy un pastor que cuido, que cuido la, la, las ovejas. Yo no soy un pastor por dicho, soy un pastor porque Dios me ha llamado. That's why I'm a pastor. I've got in arguments with, you know, a person real close to me, and I just told her, I said, uh, I didn't choose this life. I didn't want this life. I told my father that he was a pastor, and he would tell me, you're going to be a pastor, you're going to speak, and I said, I'm not going to do nothing like that. I'm going to live my life. I said, I'm going to die in those streets. If that's the way it has to go, that's what's going to happen, Dad. I said, that's for you. That ain't for me. He says, God's going to call you. You're going to hear the call of God one day. Yo no quiero ser eso. Yo no quiero ser cristiano. En ese tiempo le decía a mi papá que era pastor. Él me dijo que yo iba a ser pastor. Y aquí estoy parado como pastor, believe it or not. And I said, I didn't, I didn't ask for this, but God calls you. And when you answer the call, it's, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. You guys see the glory, but you don't know the story. You don't know what pastors go through. Right, Pastor Eric? It's, it's, it's a, sometimes it could be a, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I feel no evil. You walk through that stuff, but you keep walking. Don't let it get stuck to you. Don't, let, don't stand there and stop. You keep going in Jesus' name. And so we have to do things like that, but we have to learn to stay faithful to God because God is faithful to you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you make a mistake, even when you make a deliberate mistake, it's not a mistake. It's a choice you make. But you made it deliberately to not follow God, not to obey God, because you wanted to do what you wanted to do, and you did it, and God still forgave you, and God still kept you. He could have let you die in that sin. Thank you. He could have let you die in your mistake, but he didn't. That's how merciful God is. That's how good God is. That's why I say every one of you guys should have a, a thank you, Jesus. All the stuff we did in our lives. The men you met, the women you've met, things you've done. You, you have no sickness, no disease. This is a hallelujah moment. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That you're healthy, you're well, you're good. Places we've been, dead. Darkness, huh? The devil's house. Being in a penitentiary is the devil's house. He runs that place. And God brings you out. God brings you out of that. And he saves your life. I just want to tell you guys that God is faithful. God is true to his word. His word goes forth out of his mouth. And it doesn't return void. But it accomplishes all that it's purposed to do for your lives and my life. I sensed the call on the young man's life. That's very rare that I sense that. Because to call that somebody to that, 
That's a hard call. It's a good call. It's a beautiful call. It's not an easy call. But it's a beautiful call to be called by God to serve him in that capacity. But it gets tough. You guys know your personalities. You know your characteristics. And I got to deal with every one of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> but I love you anyway, Renee. <laughs> Uh, it's a good life. I just want to read this one scripture to you guys. I know what time it is. Thank you, mijo. Them guys been getting hassled all weekend by the <laughs> guest speakers, man. The guest speakers, you give them 45 minutes, and they got zeros up there, and the guest speakers, eh. <laughs> <I'm> like, really? <laughs> and do that in our house? Oh, my God. <laughs> but we did. We let them go. It was, it was good. If you can put up uh, John 14 uh, through 18 real quick. Give me 10 minutes and I'm done. Because I want to give you guys the word. Because we got first time visitors. I don't want you guys to think, ah, those guys don't even teach the word of God. We do teach the word of God. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's about to, he's about to be crucified. He knows that he's about to lose his life. He knows he's about to go with his heavenly father, what he yearns for, what he desires, what he wants. We don't, we don't desire like he desires. We desire more to be on earth than we are to heaven. Uh, right now where my life is at, you know, now I know where I say where Paul is at, he's in the betwixt. For me to go is Christ, but for me to live is is you guys to, to be with you guys and share the word with you guys. And he says, if you live, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. He says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. This is the Holy Spirit called the helper, called the advocate, called the, the counselor, called your legal guardian. He knows the covenant left and right, and he knows how to keep covenant, so he protects you with his word. And I will pray that the Father, that he will give you another helper, and he, uh, that you may abide, that he may abide with you forever, that he may live with you forever. The spirit of truth, that's what, it's, that's what the Holy Spirit's called. When the Holy Spirit is, lives inside of you and you're a Christian, that's why we can't live like the world. Sometimes we want to live like the world. Mijo. I don't know your name. The one with the chain right there, mijo? The little widow right here, yeah. What's your name, mijo? God loves you. And God has already called you to serve him and to honor him. The, the world has nothing to offer you. It looks like it's stardom. It looks like you can be a star gangster and stuff like that. There's no such thing, you know, no such thing. Just death and destruction out there. But God has a life for you to serve him, to honor him, and he's going to honor you and serve you if you choose. Your choice. But it's your choice, you know. The spirit of truth whom the Lord cannot receive the world cannot receive the spirit of truth because it lives and lies and it lives a lie. Talking about the spirit of the world, the world itself, the people of the world. Paul is speaking to the church. Jesus here is speaking to his disciples. You read the Bible, he's speaking to the church. Paul, the New Testament is spoken to the church, not to the world. We try to think he's talking to the world. He's talking to us. Talking to the Corinthian church, the Roman church, the Galatian church, the Ephesian church. He's talking to the Thessalonian church. He's talking to Christians, telling them how to live. The spirit of truth, of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world does not know who Jesus is, but you do. But you do. But you know him, for he dwells 
within you. He lives inside of you. That's why there's conviction. And I say conviction is good. It's not condemnation. It's not a put down. It's a conviction of love. He convicts you with his love. When you do wrong, your mama corrects you because she loves you, not because she hates you, Andrew. Your dad corrects you because he loves you and not hates you. We see it, oh, they don't like us, they don't like what I'm doing. No, they love you and they've already been out there. They love you so much that they want you to live a good life. Why not be a computer geek and make all the money, dude? <laughs> Why not? Us cool cats, you know, we struggle. He says, but you know him for he dwells within you and he will be in you. That's the promise of God. When we receive Jesus Christ our, as our Lord and Savior, he comes and he lives with us and he begins to partake of our life and he begins to instruct us and guide us and lead us in the way that we should go. That's why you young children, you youth that are here, you, you, you trip to like, why can't I do that? Why can't I be like them? Because you're a Christian. You're called by God. You're called different. You're called different than they are. A Christian shouldn't be able to live in deliberate sin. We shouldn't. It happens, but we should not. And God is knocking on doors. The doors of people's hearts. You got to open the door and let him in. Let him have his way. Amen. He says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. When he went up to be with the Father in heaven, he did not leave us alone. He left you with the Spirit of God. Cuando Jesucristo se fue con su Padre, no los dejó solos. No los dejó como huérfanos. Los dejó el Espíritu Santo. Por eso uno trae el amor de Dios. How do you say compassion in Spanish, please, somebody? Compasión. Por eso tenemos compasión. Porque el Espíritu de Dios vive adentro de uno. Sin Él vamos a ser una persona fea, horrible, duros. If we didn't have the Spirit of God living inside of us. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And some of you men, you know, even if your wife thinks you're a sissy, and, oh, man, you're soft. Yes. Thank the Lord I am soft. Thank God, hallelujah. Because we can get into a real ugly if you want to, you know. But we don't want to no more. Tired of that life. Can I get a man, Jesus? Done with that life. Over with that life. Right? So God didn't leave us alone. God left us the spirit of God within us to, to guide us, to lead us, to instruct us. I just want to encourage you guys that, and I pray, this is my prayer for you guys, that God would remind you of his word. The word that you have in your heart, if it's one scripture, if it's one word, if it's the name of Jesus, that God would remind you of that word in your heart. That's always been my prayer for myself, Father. Supernatural recall of your scriptures in my life that I would live for you and think about you daily and constantly that I would be consumed by you Lord God and that's my prayer for you guys for every one of you that God would consume you with his love with his peace with his joy with his laughter that you can have a good time and enjoy it yesterday I went to the ball game there was a bunch of drunks in front of us. About 16, 20 of them huh, right in front of us. Oh, my God. Oh my. And I know that our men were irritated. I said, yeah, they're changed. They changed, Lord. <laughs> I, I noticed that in our men. They were irritated. Like, mm -hmm. I know they wanted to, like, say something to them because they're F-bombing all over the place. Well, then people were just F-bombing this and F-bombing that and Dropping beer on people, hitting us and everything because they're all drunk and everything. And I'm like, man, these people are crazy. <laughs> it's been 28 years 
29, almost 29 years since I drank birth, since I gotten drunk, you know? And to see, to see that lifestyle, it's, it's mind-blowing. It's a trip now, you know? I don't think, I don't make fun of them or nothing. They're lost. I feel for them, you know? They're, they're lost. They're hurting. They drink to get drunk because they, they want to fill a void. They need something in their life, you know? Ladies are, they don't even act like ladies no more. You know, these are ladies probably in the early 30s, mid-30s, I think they were. Were they? Yeah, they, they just, they're acting like dudes. They're cussing like dudes and getting crazy like dudes. I'm like, this is ugly. Oh, my God, this is crazy. Then Tony finally said, Pastor, would you like to go sit somewhere else? I said, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and we got up and sat somewhere else, just a little far from them, but you can still hear them. They're loud. They, they were entertainment for everybody. People weren't even watching the game. They were watching them. <laughs> but it was beautiful to see the men didn't know that I was thinking this because I was talking to them. That they were irritated by, by the sin, not by the people, but by the sin. And they probably remember how they were, huh? Wow. Eh? And when, when God showed me that, even at a ballpark, God talks to me. And talks to you if you're listening. I'm no more special than you are. And you're no more special than I am. We're just God's special ones. Called out. Amen. Chosen of God. Amen. But if you have your ears open, you can hear God wherever you go. Even in the military. I mean, they're going to have you working out. You're going to like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and he'll answer. But it was good to see that. And uh, it was a blessing to uh, go to the game with, with the men and uh I was honored that they invited me to go to a game. I still go to games. I don't have to drink. I don't have to get high to have a good time. Amen. I just have a good time. You know, we won. That even made it better. Amen. And the Dodgers win. Yeah. Oh, oh you guys aren't Dodger fans. I'm, I forget I'm in Orange County, man. <laughs> I think I'm in L.A. County all the time. Yeah, they wear red hats. All right. Uh. <laughs> They're back there like, yeah. All angel fans back there, Father. Forgive them for they know not what they do. <laughs> no. Let's all stand. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. God showed up today. God showed up and God showed out, you know, and uh, this is the way he works in our lives, you know. Uh, a Christian life is not boring, right? It's only boring when? If you're boring. If you're boring, Christian life is going to be boring because you're a boring person. If you're saved or not saved, you're boring. Because when you're saved, you get a life. Right? Amen. I'm going to go to Ted's house one day and have dinner, man. I see that brother cooking, man. When I see him, all I see is meals, man. That brother be cooking, boy. Yeah, amen. <laughs> that brother's a good cook, man. I'm like, man, he cooks for the men as well. Don't forget our first-time visitors. If you guys could raise your hands over there, guys, your family right there. Amen. Raise your hand for me. Amen. I want you guys to... Hallelujah. We have my cousin Jesse and his lovely wife Lupe right here too. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I think God accepts cowboy fans. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, we have a first time visitor back here. <laughs> You're a cowboy fan too? Oh, Puro Cowboys. Les gusta el equipo de los Cowboys de Dallas. But you guys are California people, aren't you? Oh, uh, you're a California boy, Compton, right there, man, all in the house, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We bless you and we thank you for the joy that you set in our hearts, Lord. The laughter, Lord God, 
the gladness upon our face, the smiles that we exhibit because you live inside of us, Lord. No matter what befalls us, Lord, trials, tribulation, trouble, sickness, lack of money, Lord, we're going to smile anyway, Lord. No one's going to know, Father, what's going on because we're going to trust that you have us, Lord. You have us in the palm of your hand, and you protect us, Father, from all the works and all the evil of this world and of the enemy, Lord. Even the shortcomings of ourselves, Lord, that we beat ourselves up, Lord, forgive us for that. Because you show us that you love us, and we'll do the contrary at times. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask for blessings upon your people that you keep them healthy, you keep them well. I pray that they live long, Father. Lives that are full of jubilee, of celebration, that they would wake up every single day celebrating another day of life, Father. I thank you for Turning Point Fellowship. How I love these people, Father, because I know that you love them first, Lord, and continue to love them. I thank you for every minister here. I thank you for every usher, for every uh, media sound or ministers too. Our worship team, Lord, I thank you for the work that you're doing in our worship team. How beautiful it is that it can be seen, Lord God, that they like to worship you and they love to worship you, Lord. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for... Everyone here, their children and grandchildren, Lord, I ask as they go out and eat or go home and eat and watch the ball games, whatever they're going to do, Father, I pray that they would bless you and honor you first and foremost, most always, Lord. Bless our nursery workers, our teachers, Father. I pray that they would not grow weary and well-doing, for in due season, Father, they would reap what they have sown. I pray this. Father, and I pray that we would all stand up and become ministers of this house. I pray that every one of us would raise our hand and say, if you can use anyone, Lord, you can use me. Use us, Father, for your glory and for your kingdom. Teach us to love one another, to forgive one another, Lord God, and teach us to celebrate one another. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. 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 <clears throat> we are dismissed. The children are ready to go. <laughs> We're dismissed. Hug on somebody, shake somebody's hand. Tell them your name. You think they know your name, but they don't know your name. They don't know your name. They, you